Welcome to the Chicago Cubs franchise episode one introduction to the team. Um, I have waited a while to start this franchise because I wanted to find the right team. I didn't want to choose a team at the start that actually does great in the year unexpectedly. Someone like the Orioles who are actually having a pretty decent season. Um, So I chose the Cubs. Um... In 2016, if you watch baseball and you follow baseball, you know they won the World Series after ending their 108-year drought, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then 2017 was the last year they were really com- very competitive, making it to the NLCS but losing to the Dodgers. Um, in 2018, 2019, 2020, struggling after that, just getting to the NLDS, but nothing much after that. Don't even know if 2019 they made it to the NLDS, and last year not even making the playoffs. So, this year, not doing great as well in real life. Um, So, I'd like to change some things up, go back to those winning ways, and have a good franchise. And, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, So many great guys I look forward to using. Nico Horner, Stroman, and Christopher Morrell, one of their top prospects. I hope we get to use him soon. So, let's... Get right into this. We're going to have GM contracts off, fantasy draft off, legend free agents off, CPU roster control off, CPU trading on, CPU make trades, ignore budgets off, force trades off, designated hitter on, and extra inning runner on. I mean, I don't really like the rule, but it, it's, it's, it's a thing in real life, so I guess we'll have to have it. Um, we're going to start the regular season, and we're going to go through the roster right now and introduce you to all the players that I'm excited for, all the players that we may look to trade, all the players that, you know, just get into this roster. Let's go. Now looking at the roster, we're going to start with starting pitching. Looking at the first one, we have our ace of rotation, the guy we just paid to come play with us this year, Marcus Stroman, a sinker, slider, splitter cutter and four seam fastball the 3.02 era last year killed it last year for the mets um and we're looking for him to just do just the same thing for us maybe even better then now looking at kyle Hendricks um with a sinker circle change four seam curveball he's consistent other than last year struggled last year but uh he's been consistent other than that and we love to see an improvement from last year hope definitely an improvement from last year is 4.77 ERAs, and just not like him. Um, highest in a while. So uh, we look forward to better things from him. Wade Miley, a cutter, circle change, four seam slider, and sweeping curve from Louisiana. 78 overall left handed starting pitcher, our first lefty in the uh, rotation. Had a no hitter with Cincinnati Reds last year. Great year. His best year in a while. 3.37 ERA. Now we look at Adbert Alizoy, a sinker, slider. Four seam, uh, circle change and cutter. He really depends on that slider. That slider is very nasty. Um, a little bit of a down year last year. I mean, I can't say a down year, but it's, I mean, something to build on. Alec Mills, a sinker, a four seam fastball, a circle change, and a curveball. Um, again, uh, threw a no hitter in 2020, but uh, could look to improve upon him. Drew Smiley, uh, starting pitcher. Uh, four seam, twelve six cutter. With the arsenal that he has, um, we might still, might look to move him to the bullpen. Then our top starting pitching prospect, Braylon Marquez, ninety four mile per hour, four seam fastball, a slurve changeup, and a two seam fastball. Uh, he's look to improve, keep building that potential, keep building that overall. Then we have Jordan Wicks um, and Anderson Espinosa, B potentials. Also look to bring them up in the future, but we'll wait for that. Chris Martin, Rowan Witt, Cody Hewer, a B potential. 25-year-old look to uh, elevate to that number one bullpen role. Michael Givens, Keegan Thompson, maybe Robert Gazelman later if an injury pops up, and Sean Newcomb. Then, that's kind of it with David Robertson rounding out the closing pitching role. Uh, Bullpen will need to work upon. Wilson Contreras now. One of the best catchers in all of baseball, maybe even the best. Having a great year in real life. Um, two 
2020, obviously crazy year. Don't really talk about that. 2021 kind of lowered um, what he usually does. So we're looking for a great year out of him as he has had in real life. Yon Gomes, a great backup. We're definitely going to work him in a lot, maybe at the DH spot, maybe at first base, as he can play there. But he's got to have to work that. Frank Schwindel. 326 average last year. Great OPS from him. We look to see the same out of Frank. Um, he hopefully can contribute as well as he did last year. No one else behind him to get that first base role, so it's all his. Maybe could lose some starts to um, Jan Gomes, but most likely he'll take that over. We look to see an overall improvement. Nick Madrigal. Uh, Nicky. High contact. That's all he does. Gets on base. 305, 340 in his two years of playing time. Um, we look to see that again. That's just what Nicky Magical does. David Bodie struggling last year um, and 2020, but you know, obviously 2020 was the craziest year in all of baseball. Uh, yeah, so he's in double A right now. He's usually a major league guy. It's just haven't seen good stuff. So he's going to stay for probably most, not most of the season, but definitely start work back there. Patrick Wisdom, going to be our starting third baseman this year. Great power on both sides. Can play first, left, and right. Uh, great, good rookie year last year. Um, and he, I bet you he can improve upon that more and more in the years to come. Christopher Morrell, our top one of our top prospects. Um, he could be on the come up this year. Um, we'll see. It depends on if there's an injury or a trade happens where he needs to come up or if he's getting to that overall where it's like he can't be in Triple A anymore. Nico Horner, our best player on the team. High contact, high vision, high clutch, high discipline. He great year last year. I mean, the OPS was a little low, but... It's totally doable that he can raise that over 800. Nico Horner from out of Stanford, a 24-year-old. Best player on the team. Now Andrelton Simmons. Great defense. Like Nico Horner. Did not forgot to talk about that. Nico Horner has great defense. Andrelton Simmons is what you think of defensive shortstops. When you think of defensive shortstops, name comes to mind. Andrelton Simmons, Derek Jeter. Um, maybe it's hard to put Andrelton Simmons in Derek Jeter's class, but Andrelton Simmons is the one of the best defensive shortstops ever. Um, and uh, we have Ed Howard as a prospect and Christian Hernandez, a potential 18 overall out of the Dominican Republic. Um, he could definitely turn into something later. Um, Ian Happ in left field, the switch hitting 27-year-old with a potential. Had a 25 home run last season. Smacks righties and... He struggles a little bit against lefties as he's worse from the right side. Smack 25 homers, as I said. Um, as I said, he hits better from the left, but can still hit the ball from the right. Clint Frazier, a former Yankee, 26-year-old. 27, my bad, from Georgia. He's definitely going to be a backup. Now we have Jason Hayward. Definitely going to be looked at getting rid of as that contract is high, as we talk about later in this video when we look at the budget. Um, Rafael Ortega, who is next, will probably start. Uh, most definitely. I mean, Hayward would get some playing boat, but I like the swing, and I like everything Rafael Ortega did better. I mean, looking at last year's stats, I really think he got snubbed this year um, with the overall, but it's okay. Um, great year last year. Let's see, look to see the same. Brennan Davis, our top prospect in the facility, not facility, organization. Um, if he could be up in a few years looking at the depth, 30 and 32 ahead of him. They, he could be up soon. Pete Crow Armstrong, one of the other top prospects. Um, and Kevin Alcantara, which rounds out center field. <clears throat> Pete Crow Armstrong and Kevin Alcantara. Looking at right... Oh, and Christian Franklin. That is my fault. forgot about Christian Franklin. Looking at right field now. Jumping the guns. My fault, Christian. Christian. Looking at Sayu Suzuki now. Uh, rookie year. Great. Great fielding. Uh, great contact. Um, from Japan. A potential. 
yeah, that's the roster. Looking at our budget here, Marcus Stroman taking up the most amount of money, but we're okay with that. We just pay him to be our ace of the staff, and we're going to pay him like that. Great year last year. We're expecting the same out of him this year, maybe even better. Try to get that ERA below 3 as it was at a 3.02. Um, Jason Hayward, one of my uh, issues. We're probably going to get rid of him soon. There is only two years left, but that's just a lot of cash he's taken up. And I think we could use that on this offseason, maybe. Go after some some player. Well, who knows? We'll see when we get there. Uh, Kyle Hendricks over here. Perfect. He's our solid number two guy. Always consistent. We can always know what we're getting out of Kyle Hendricks. Great. Wade Miley, 10. And after that, I... Don't see no wrongs. I mean, Smiley, we could probably deal him or Givens because we do have an extra pitcher. We have six starters available for use. So, um, yeah, we could do that. Sorry about that noise. A car is going off right now. If you guys can hear that, car's just blaring right now. Um, so the budget looks good. So... As I'm speaking of that, I think I'm going to put um, Jason Hayward on the journey blogger right now. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, hopefully, episode two of this, which will be opening day, will come out either tomorrow or the day after that. Um, yeah, if you have any suggestions, uh, please let me know. Thank you. Bye.